Hi everyone, I'm Jakub and this is Vision Devs TV. On this channel, we'll talk about everything related to Webflow, low-code, no-code, web dev, and how to use those tools to be really nice, cool stuff on the web today. In today's video, we're going to look at the latest Webflow release, bringing React components directly into Webflow. Let's dive in. Let's go through the official Webflow release pages together. A couple of days ago, Webflow has released import code components from an external code base to add custom dynamic React components to your Webflow site features. What that means, we can build calculators, charts, multi-step forts, sliders, tabs, you name it, all to enhance site functionality and user engagement. We need a couple of tools which we are going to describe in a second in order to run it successfully in our Webflow Designer panel. That means we can now import React code directly into our Webflow projects. Until now, it wasn't really possible without hacks or third-party scripts. Thanks, Webflow. Next, let's jump to the DevLink page. Here's where the magic happens. DevLink is the bridge between your React code and Webflow. With DevLink, you can import React components into Webflow, export Webflow components to React, and even deploy apps directly to Webflow Cloud. Of course, I recommend diving into official Webflow docs. I will link all the links in the description where you can find more details about the setup, installations, how to import and bundle, and some other cool stuff. All right, before we start building, let's quickly go over what tools we'll need. First, we'll need Node.js and NPM, these are required to run our development environment. Next, we'll use the Webflow CLI, which will let us connect to our React code with Webflow. As my code editor, I'm gonna choose VS Code, as that's what I use daily. For version controls and easy commits, I recommend using GitHub Desktop. However, Git will be fine as well. Of course, we'll need a Webflow account to host and test our components. And finally, the terminal, where we'll run all the commands. I'm gonna run it on macOS. So, these are the basics nothing too complicated, and most of you probably have installed them already. All right, let's switch over to the terminal. I assume you already have Node.js and NPM installed, as well as the Webflow CLI. Let's quickly check which versions we have. We're gonna run bash commands, and don't worry, if you don't have something installed on your machine, I leave the links to the official documentation in the description of this video, so you can set it up first. So with our environment ready, let's jump into the project setup. Then we're gonna check for MPX Webflow to see if we have CLI installed on our machine. We get some helpers as well, and we are ready to move into our Git setup. So now I've just created a new local repository in GitHub desktop called Webflow React. The next step is to publish it to GitHub so it's synced with the cloud and I can collaborate or roll back changes if needed. Once published, we have the repo both locally and online, which keeps everything nice and organized. After this, we're ready to open it in VS Code and install our React app inside. I'm gonna publish it. We can keep this code private, add your name, description, and then publish. That's all. All right, so now let's move into the terminal and set up our React project. First, I make sure I'm inside my GitHub repository folder called Webflow React. This takes me into my repo directory. Now I want to keep my React app separated inside the subfolder, so I use create React app to generate a fresh setup. So our React project is already set up. I'm gonna run npm start inside this folder, open the default React app in the browser. Here we are, we have our React app set locally on our machine. So now that we've started our React app, let's quickly go over what's happening here. By default, create React app gives us a starter template. You can see the React logo spinning in the middle and some placeholder text. This is basically a demo page just to confirm everything is working. Now let's switch it over to VS Code and prepare our project for the next step. First, let's open the git ignore file. Here I add a new line with .env. This makes sure that our environment file stays private and doesn't get pushed to GitHub. Next, let's create a new file called .env inside the root of our project. For now, I'll just leave it empty, but later we'll use it to store our Webflow credentials like the site ID and API token. And finally, let's open the source app.js file and make a small change. 
just to see how everything is working. I've already added a logo of Vision Devs Agency into the folder, so I'm just gonna replace the file name and then we're gonna change the text inside the button. I'm gonna save it. As we can see, we have our logo on the local host and the learn reacting workflow with Vision Devs button. That means all the changes are taking place locally in our version of the app. So before we start editing our code base, I'm gonna push the updates into my GitHub repo. The next small step in our setup is to add TypeScript support to our React project. To do this, we need to install TypeScript itself, along with the type of definitions for React, React DOM, and Node. So let's open our terminal in the root of the React project and run the following command. This will add TypeScript and all unnecessary type packages as development dependencies. Once that's done, we'll be ready to initialize our TypeScript configuration file and start migrating files step by step. Now that we have TypeScript installed, the next thing we need to do is initialize TypeScript by creating a tsconfig.json file. We do it with this command. Once it's ready, we rename our JavaScript files into ts files, so index.js becomes index.tsx and so on. After that, we just need to make sure imports and typings are correct and we're ready to run the app again with npm start. As a next step, we need to readjust our tsconfig.json file and the rest of the files are accordingly. Now I'm gonna convert the JS files into tsx files and then run debugging. So we've converted our React project from plain JS into TypeScript. That meant installing TypeScript along with React type definitions and then creating a tsconfig.json file. Next, we renamed our main files like app.js and index.js into app.tsx and index.tsx. The .tsx extension tells TypeScript these files contain JSX code. We also set up quiz.tsx as a separate component with its own CSS file for styles that keeps the logic and styling organized and reusable. Finally, we added a webflow.json configuration file. This tells Webflow what library we're exporting, gives it a name and description, and specifies where to look up for TypeScript components. With this setup, the React app is now fully typed, structured, and ready to integrate into Webflow. We also need to remember to create quiz.webflow.tsx file, which is going to be used to render the component inside the Webflow designer panel. So what we need to do next is add this command into our terminal and the program will run the bundling for us. And then we need to share our library via Webflow CLI by running this command. All ready to go. Now we need two Webflow projects, which I have created already. The first one is gonna act as a host for our library. We're gonna press here, install the library, and then in another project, we can install it and when we open the component panel, we are going to see our quiz component. Copy right in the placeholder, publish, and here we can see our live React component on the Webflow hosted website. Do you like Webflow? I love it. Do you like React? I'm React. Do you low code? I do. Hope you enjoyed this episode and you're gonna play with React in Webflow. Like the video, comment the video, share your work in the comments. Let's see what we can build in React and Webflow all together. Speak to you in the next one soon. Take it easy, guys.